What we're going to do is uh, look in the book of Colossians, the epistle of Colossians, and this is the 14th section that we'll be studying, starting with the tail end, the last verse in chapter 3, Colossians 3.25, and going through Colossians 4.4 4 today. Um, let's read through them first. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there's no respect of persons. Fourth chapter. Masters, give unto your servants that, wh that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Uh, verse 3, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. So that, that kind of is the, uh, oh, oh, let me <laughs> finish the, that I may make it manifest as to as I ought to speak. That uh, I also, let's see, how's he put it? Uh, to speak the mystery of, the end of verse 3, to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. That, that's the other side of, uh, or, or immediately after wh what, he, what he said or what he is recorded as saying in Acts 28 verse 20, uh, 20, I think it's verse 20 in there, 23, the hope of Israel, uh, I'm in bonds for the hope of Israel, I think is the word, and, and here he's in bonds uh, to speak the mystery of Christ. So you can hear people sometimes try to rip uh, Colossians 3.25 out of its context. Uh, they want to try and prove that that saved people are not really saved until they're in heaven. But Ephesians 2, 5, and 6, it, they <laughs> claim them, you know, claim them a lot. Believers are saved upon belief. Ephesians 2, 5, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved. You are saved. You're not waiting to be saved. God made believers in Paul's gospel of Christ to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our spirits are there with him now. They don't die. Our spirit doesn't die. Our flesh dies. Besides all that, if they do try to rest uh, Colossians 3.25, from its context, wiggle it out of there. They, uh, well, they want to say it applies to a saved person's relationship to God. It, it would have to fit with the wages of sin in, the, in Romans 3, 3.23, I get them mixed up. I think it's 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But on the contrary, we believers, we only fit in the second part of that verse, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of God is eternal life. If you don't have a Savior... And if you have any doubt whether you might someday need a Savior when it'll be too late to change your mind, then the verse for you is Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive that gift. Colossians 3.25 says, But he that doeth wrong, in spiritual terms, who is he that doeth wrong? If you remember back when we read Colossians 3, verse 6, 
we said that it would apply later. Well, here it is. Uh, so let's look at 3.6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. We give all thanks and, and uh, good, <laughs> good thinking, good thoughts to our gracious Savior and Lord that we believers in Paul's gospel of Christ crucified for our sins are no longer children of disobedience. Romans 6, 17, But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Galatians 3, 26, For ye, and, and that's a, a uh, there's... <laughs> In the context, that's a certain group of people. It's not everybody. Ye are all, all of that ye, are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. First Timothy 1.16, Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter Believe on him to life everlasting. Believing on him brings life everlasting. Our God brings it when we believe on him. <laughs> Romans 8:16 The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And notice it doesn't say uh, the <laughs> The uh, spirit itself beareth, beareth witness to our spirit. He's not somewhere around or in us talking to us like that, saying, uh, you know, saying that we're children of God. He knows it. We know it. He bears the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you're saved, if you're a saved saint saint of the creator God then you're a child of God you're not a child of disobedience so that uh, we don't fit in that verse uh, that there's wrath coming Colossians 1 13 bears that out who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son talking to believers in this body, we may make some bad choices. We may be disobedient at times, but that fits right into 1 Corinthians 3.15. If any man's work be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And let's go on to Romans 4.24 and 25 but for us also to whom it shall be imputed talking about righteousness shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification believe God and what he said about Jesus that he was delivered to death as full payment for your offenses, all your offenses, all your sins, and that he was raised again for your justification. Believe that God's righteousness is imputed to you upon your belief that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and that he was raised again the third day. Look at those verses again. But for us also, talking about the righteousness of God, imputed righteousness, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Now let's look at the final part of these verses, this section. It's uh, the final part about interpersonal relationships. <coughs> Pardon me. Colossians 4, verse 1. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you have a master in heaven. 
So that verse continues the final uh, as the final verse in uh, in the same topic uh, that we covered before this lesson. That would be verses 18, three, chapter three, verses 18 to 25, that of personal relationships or how saved people are to relate to others. Paul has taught us briefly about wives, about husbands, children, fathers, servants, and now he addresses masters. Again, Paul teaches to apply in daily life the grace that we have been given by God, that we've received grace from God, gladly received it, pass it on, be gracious to others. And that is one reason why we need to learn about our glorified position in Christ before we try to apply that uh, to our daily living. Paul teaches not to be abusive, but rather be just and equal, he said. And here in verse 1, and the previous verse uh, in, in 3.25, Paul uses the principle that he states about masters in the parallel scripture in Ephesians. We can look for that in Ephesians 6 verse 9. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening. Forbearing, threatening. In other words, hold back. Don't, don't. Just like in Second Corinthians 12:6, Paul knew the truth, but he forbore. He held back until it was the right time. Uh, Do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. Well, uh, let me just paraphrase that. Uh, you masters, treat your servants fairly, remembering that you have a master in heaven, and he will not judge you any lighter just because you are a master on earth. And that ends Paul's section specifically on uh, interpersonal relationships. And then he goes into talking about grace and, and prayer. Prayer. Uh, he exhorts the Colossians and us to continue, this will be uh, Colossians 4 verse 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. In other words, three things he says there, continue, don't give up on praying, keep praying. Secondly, watch, pray purposefully. Uh, with purpose, with uh, keeping track of those you pray for and the projects for which you pray. And thirdly, pray with thanksgiving, always giving thanks to God. And we've got a lot to be thankful for in this dispensation. And then before giving some general exhortations, Paul follows up these general instructions with two verses of specific things for which grace believers are to pray. Let's see, that's chapter 4, verse 3. Uh, With all, praying for us also, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. And my understanding of that word with all is that it means together with or at the same time. So it'll be kind of kind of like the word fellowship uh, gathered together with. Uh, verse 3 is strongly connected with Paul's comments in verse 2. Therefore, it is as if Paul was saying, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving with all, at the same time in other words, praying for also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance. We ought to be praying for that. To speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. In other words, not only 
let your specific requests be made known unto God, according to Philippians 4, verses 6 through 8, but also pray about God's purposes, God's plans, God's events. Pray about that. Let, let that be the subject of your prayers. Colossians 4.4 4 puts an explanation point <laughs> on verse uh, 3. He says that I may make it manifest. Uh, talking about the uh, mystery of Christ. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. He's been sent to do that, in other words. Sent out by God. Paul says there is something that he ought to to speak. He refers to it here in, uh, in verse 4 as it. So looking further back in verse 3, we see Paul ta is talking about being imprisoned for speaking the mystery. And further, that he is asking for prayer that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. Paul describes that mystery of Christ in a little more detail in Romans 16, verse 25 and beginning of 26. Now, to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel, so people that are saved, and, and here it is, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. So Christ revealed to Paul a mystery or a secret, which was kept secret since the world began, which along with Paul's gospel and the other scriptures is power to establish you. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7 in there, we read Christ also revealed to Paul about, about that mystery, wisdom about it, that God had ordered it unto our glory before he created the world. And then he hid it to be revealed in due time. Uh, and then he sent out Paul in due time to speak the hidden wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even though even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Paul is asking the Colossians, the Laodiceans, and people like us, believers, to pray that God would open a door of utterance to him and to each other for us to speak the mystery even more, uh, the, that mystery which was kept secret until it was revealed by Christ to Paul is the facts that Paul preaches concerning the salvation gospel of Christ and the new man, the body of Christ. That is what we are to pray for today. That's a believer's prayer that God would open a door of utterance for us to speak more, for us to speak of, of the wisdom of God more, which was, it was formerly kept secret. It's newly re released, re revealed to Paul in Paul's epistles. So, study to be approved workmen. All right, uh, that concludes today's lesson. Uh, we'll try and uh, I think I can be here tomorrow for that for the 15th out of 17 and I hope it's been a help any comments or questions